All right, so today what we're going to cover is we're going to cover CRUD inside of Django. Who can, I'm just going to start calling on people because otherwise it's going to take a little bit too long. Uh, I'm going to say, um, Andrew Humphrey, tell me what CRUD means. Uh, it's the create, read, update, and delete data. Yep, that's exactly right. Thank you. So it's cre it stands for create, read, update, and destroy or delete. You can it's either one of those things, and that's like the basis. That's the fundamental like basis for most of the things that you're going to see online these days. Uh, think of an app, pretty much any app that you use, and I can bet with the exception of like one or two of them, it's going to be a CRUD app. So think about it, Amazon CRUD app, because I can create, read, update, and destroy orders. I can create, read, update, or destroy products. I can create, read, update, or destroy comments and reviews. And I can create, read, update, destroy things like my credit cards and items from my shopping cart and everything like that. Uh, Instagram, Instagram, I can create, read, update, or destroy uh, photos, create, read, update, or destroy uh, you know, uh, comments and likes, I can, you know, I can update them. I, I can't actually, I can create them because I can like a photo. I can read them because I can see all the likes on my photo. I can update it because I can turn it on and off and I can delete it because I'm turning it on and off. Okay. So it's also a CRUD app. Pretty much everything that you can think of is a CRUD app. Can anyone think of something that's not a CRUD app that you use on a regular basis? I've only had one person stump me in the 10 cohorts that I've had. Weather. Uh, Google Maps? Uh, I don't know if that's a, I mean, it technically could be considered a CRUD app because somewhere, some, somewhere someone's create, reading, and updating and destroying uh, locations on a map. Weather, um, is that an app? Is that something I interact with? Um, create, read, update, destroy, uh, towns inside the app. So that's possible. I, the one that stumped me the most was Twitter because it is create, read, and destroy. You can, I heard you cannot update a tweet, but I'm not somebody who uses Twitter. All that to say, more than likely, 99 times out of 100, the things that you're going to be doing on the web revolve around this concept of creating something inside of a database, reading something out of a database, updating and deleting something out of a database. And that's what we're going to be working on today. And uh, as I mentioned before, I do like to push the pace a little bit, but in the case that you don't understand anything uh, that I'm saying, or you want me to re-explain it in some other way, please reach out and interrupt me as I am talking. I will not get offended. So today what we're gonna be doing, and again, I'm just reading straight from the uh, curriculum. So all these code samples that I'm copying and pasting, all the things that I'm typing come directly from the curriculum group today. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a library app and inside that library app, we're gonna keep track of a bunch of books. We're gonna be able to create, read, update, and destroy a bunch of books. So with that, I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna set up our project by typing in Django admin start project. And it's gonna, I'm gonna entitle this project called library. Library already exists. Uh, let me remove library. Actually, no, wait, wait, is that the library where I think it is? Oops, I'm in the wrong place and library would delete my entire computer. Let's jump over to the desktop and run that again. So I'm gonna press up, up, up uh, one more time. So again, we're on we're on this, uh, this command line here. I'm just pressing up so I don't have to type it again. And I'm gonna start a project called library. I can see that it exists by typing in ls and there's my library right over there. Let me change my directory from where I am into library by doing CD, LI, and then tab to complete. And I'm gonna open that whole thing and restart VS Code. So it's gonna restart it. And the first thing I wanna do whenever I'm talking about any sort of Python slash Django, when I'm talking about a Django um, application, the first thing I wanna do is create a virtual environment. Who can explain to me why a virtual environment is important? Uh, I'm going to just go down the line here. Charlie, can you tell me a little bit about what a virtual environment is and why it's important? Too slow. Dylan. A uh, virtual environment, from my understanding, is like a, a safe kind of copy uh, with 
where you can start from scratch and download exactly what you need, like what software. And I guess the use of it would be like if you had uh, various projects, say, that are pre-existing that are operating on old versions of software, so you don't have conflictions that way. So you can just act, like log into that virtual environment to work on it specifically in that version. Yep, it's, it's 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 a great that's a great definition. Uh, I like to think of it as uh, have you ever watched Bubble Boy, the movie? It's a, it's a it's a it's an old movie. It's it's a long time ago. But the idea here is that uh, the main character has a lot of autoimmune issues, and to protect the this main character, his parent uh, wraps him in a giant bubble, like the ones that you know you do like the bowling like human bowling in. Um, so this idea of a virtual environment is that. It's a bubble that surrounds your application so that whatever you install and whatever you're running within the activated, when, whenever you activate a virtual environment, it doesn't affect the rest of your computer. It only affects the inside of what's going on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a virtual environment called virtual environment. So the command to create a virtual environment is Python dash M for make virtual environment called virtual environment. You can call this whatever you want. You can call this poop. And then what you'll notice is that there will be a poop virtual environment that just shows up over here. You can name it whatever you want, but I'm going to remove this for now. I'm going to do Python make a virtual environment called virtual environment. That is the that is the way that we generally do this. All right. So what you'll notice is on the left hand side here, there is a virtual environment, and there's underneath the hood, there's just a ton of like extra like Python code that exists uh, to make this work. We're going to activate it by running source vem bin activate. This is the command to activate your virtual environment. So just because you have a virtual environment folder over here doesn't mean actually anything's happening. You need to activate it. And when I activate it, you'll notice that to the left of my uh, command line prompt over here, it has a parentheses with virtual environment. This is how you know that it, this is actually activated. Oh my goodness, what is this? What is this? This is not what I was talking about, but uh, yes, thank you. All right, so after I create my virtual environment, again, I've wrapped my entire application around with this bubble wrap. I can install whatever I want on the inside and it won't affect the rest of my code. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run pip install Django. I do this even though I have Django already, the virtual environment, I just want the most updated version of this. Now, virtual environments are important because right now we're in create while we're creating brand new applications and there we're all using Django 3.1 you might be working on an old version of Django when you get to a company more often than not you're going to be working on an old version of Django and if you have Django installed and on your computer globally and it's Django 3.1 but your company is running on Django 1.8 like certain companies that will remain anonymous um, then if you try to run a bunch of extra stuff outside of a virtual environment, your version on your computer, 3.1, is going to interfere with your old, with your uh, company's project, which is running on 1.8. By activating this virtual environment and installing everything that they need you to install, you're basically throwing a bubble around your about around this project so you can install whatever you want without affecting the rest of the computer. So I've, I'm here. I created my virtual environment. I activated it. I pip install Django. And then I'm going to, let me just clear this so I have a little bit more room for people to read. I'm going to create an app, manage.py. That's this file over here. I'm going to start an app called Books. What you'll notice, Books shows up on the left. So right now we've got four things. We've got Books. This is the app. We've got Library. This is the project. We've got a virtual environment that's been activated. You can tell that over here. And you got manage.py. Who can tell me, I'm going to go down the list. Emma, tell me a little bit about the difference between a Django project and a Django app. You are muted. You're muted again. A project can hold many apps. Yep, that's pretty much it. So think about like, so we, we have an app. Uh, sorry, we've got a project. A project can have many apps, and an app can belong to many projects. So if you think about Amazon as like an entire project, right? If, if it was structured, which it's not, uh, if it was structured as one giant Django application, uh, this project called Amazon has many apps underneath it. They have an app that might be in charge of just ordering. 
They might have an app that's just in charge of inventory. They might have an app that's just in charge of shipping. Um, so all of these are different like aspects of a project. And if I can separate those into different lanes, that's the idea here. Right now we've got one app called Books that belongs to a project called Library. So a library might have an app called Books where they keep track of all the books that they have. They also might have a, uh, another app called Members where they keep track of all the members that they have. And same thing with you know reserving and overdue fines and like, yeah, you get, you get the idea. But the, the whole point I'm trying to make right now is a project, the project is library and the application is gonna be called Books. Does that make sense or do I need to, should I continue on or not? I see some short nods, so I'm gonna keep going. All right, so I've got this project called library. And if I jump inside of settings.py, this in, this is all the settings that we need for this project to run. This is oops, this is a bunch of you know pre-written code by Django just to make this work right off the bat. What you'll notice at the very top is that there are installed apps that we have available to us. So inside of every single Django project, we need between lines 20 through two through 27 that we just need those in order to get this to run. And in order to register my books application to my library project, I need to add that to somewhere inside this list. So at the very bottom, at the very top, somewhere in the middle, just somewhere in this list of installed apps, you have to have books. And generally I like to put a little comma at the very end of a list just to be kind to the next person. Um, who's who's going to be adding something else. What you'll notice is that when I first opened this file, there was already a comma there just to kind of be nice. I'm going to continue that on. Add my application called books and move on. So the first thing we did after we after we started this uh, project, sorry, after we started this app called books is we registered it under settings.py inside of library, which is the project. Let's talk about books. We're going to jump over to books go over to models and let's uh, let's talk a little bit about some books. Uh, I'm going to pick on the next person, Frankie. Tell me what every single book has. Uh, book usually has like an author, a title, um, different characteristics. Uh, ISBN if you're like trying to order order it. Okay. Uh, genre maybe. I'm just going to go with uh, these three for now, because once we get into genre, then we're talking about other other models. And today we're just going to be creating, reading, updating, destroying just one model. So you said every single book has an author, a title, an ISBN uh, number. That's the thing that they scan on the back to figure out how much uh, to charge you. So at the very top of this file here, I've got from Django. So from the Django library, there's a module called database, DB. I'm going to import models from there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do class book. Again, we're talking about object orientation here. And we're going to inherit from models.model. You don't really need to know what's going on underneath the hood over here. Just understand that when I have a class book that doesn't inherit from anything, like this, if I just have a class book and it doesn't inherit from anything, it's just the plain old Python object. There's no, there's no, there's no fanciness here. But when it inherits from models.model, which is the Django model to connect to a database, now we have the ability to both create a Django object, but it also connects directly to the database. So you said we have an author. Uh, I'm actually just going to move this down, highlight this whole thing, command control down, move it over, uncomment, and just do a bunch of equals. Okay. All right. So what we're doing here is we're going to create our schema. We're going to create a table called book, books, and every single book has three uh, three attributes: an author, a title, and an ISBN number. I'm kind of going off the script today, so if we blow up, it's not my fault. Uh, tell me what kind of uh, what kind of data is author going to be, Frankie? Uh, I think it was char field max yep. length of something. Yeah, let's just let's let's just have it be a chart field. And the reason why I'm doing that is like an author, you're just gonna put an author name. I'm just gonna put, yeah, I'm just gonna do that. So models dot char field, and I'm gonna say the max length is gonna be uh, 200. Most people's names are less 200 characters or less. Same thing with title and uh, isbin number. 
Is this just a number? It's an integer that's either nine, 10 or 13 digits. All right, let's 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 do that. Let's. I don't know how to do that. Let's just jump that. Uh, so we know that char field works as, as string characters for author and title. I, I wanna put in just some numbers in here uh, that are maybe hard coded. Let's just say it's nine for now. Uh, Django uh, model integer field. All right, I'm just Googling this one because I don't really know. We're kind of going off the cuff here. Uh, I saw the other one was char field. So I'm gonna guess there's one called integer field. Ah, oh, looks like that. Uh, an integer field that automatically into, okay, that's a big int, 64. Let's, is there a example of this? Let's take a hey, look John, at integer I field. Yep. I, I have a question. Would sure. integer be the correct thing to use since ISBNs could start with zero? Good point. With that, I couldn't just do a chart field over here. Uh, that's a good. That's a good point. Because ISBN numbers can start with zero, uh, I believe that in the case that you want strict matching in this particular case, because integers can't. I, I don't believe integers can start with zero. I think those get cut off, and then you start at the, no, the first non-zero integer. So we'll just start with an ISBN as a character field like this, so that you can actually start with zero. How do we feel? Okay, so we've got a class called book inside of our books uh, application. It has three fields, author, title, and ISBN, and we can put any sort of characters inside of there. Cool, I, I'm okay with this one. And I'm gonna create another method called thunder string. What this is gonna do from, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna type this, I'm gonna comment it out to sh just to show what we're doing. So I'm gonna do return the ID is self.id, and I'll explain this in a second. Um, I have a question, John. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, if you're building a model, like just one model, one table like this, would you still use Django? Or like, is that a thing people do since you don't need the relationships? Um, you can use Django. There's another one called Flask, which is a, a smaller framework. Um, so you use you choose Django when you want to make it a web application because there's a lot of stuff that's built in. And uh, we could just, it's pretty, I think the easiest way to summarize it is it's easier to set up if you use Django versus if you use something smaller like Flask. The comment the software right now. And we'll come back to this in just a second. All right, so what have we done so far? We created a project called library. We created an app called books. We registered our books app inside of uh, the library project by adding it to the bottom of installed apps. And then we created our first model. Right now, we're just worried about creating, reading and updating and destroying a book, which has an author, a title and is been number and that's it. From here, even though that we even though we've added our book class inside of this particular file here, it doesn't exist inside of a database. There's actually no database that exists right now with this particular stuff populated inside of it. So the next command I'm going to run is going to be if I can find it um, manage.py. Again, that's this file over here. It has a bunch of uh, commands that are built into it. I'm going to make migrations. What you'll notice is I've got a folder called migration and it's empty right now. The moment I started typing inside of models.py, Django saw that there was some changes being made here and they created this uh, migrations folder. When I run this, run, when I run this make migrations uh, script, what happens is it automatically generates this, met, this particular uh, file called 0001 initial.py. What you'll notice is these are ordered. So if I were to make any changes to my part, my models.py, if I added another model, or if I changed this particular model and I made migrations again, what it would do is it would read through all of the files, see if there are any changes from the previous migration to this migration, and then make those updates. So think about Amazon. Amazon, when they first started, it was the early 90s, and they sold one thing. They just sold books. That's all they did. But over the years, they started adding in more and more features. They created a marketplace. They started selling household items. 
Before long, they had um, streaming TV and a bunch of other things. Their database, when they first started, did not include everything. They added things as they went along. And that's the same thing with most products that you use today. It started off as one thing and they continuously add over time. If you were to create a database, you need to create it with migrations, which are basically just steps in order. So if I were to like move over to Amazon and to work there, and I wanted to install the Amazon database locally on my particular machine, there are things that were created and things that were destroyed. There used to be like Google Glass was part of Google. So that might have been a record inside of the database, but then it got destroyed because nobody wanted to use it because it was too far ahead of its time. The idea what I'm trying to say is all these are numbered. And when I run the next command, which is manage.py migrate, Good question, it's, going John. To do, it's going to read one second. It's going to read through all of the migration files in order and run through each one. Right now, we only have one, so it's really easy. But pretty soon, if I were to make any additions or deletions from this models.py folder, it's going to create something new. Tommy, you had something. Yes, sir. So um, when you started typing, uh, you said when you started typing in the models.py file, that's when it starts, uh, that's when it spins up uh, my, the migrations folder. Yep. Okay. Um, it, what, what I'm trying to say is I didn't create this migrations folder. It automatically came up when I started typing here. Okay, check. And then, and then once you run make migrations, that's when it makes the uh, 001 file. Exactly. Before, when I, when I didn't run make migrations, this file didn't exist. The moment I ran it, this file came into play. And the 001 file is just an insertion script? It's just an insertion script. That's exactly what it is. This is the very first thing that I'm going to run. So if you take a look over here, um, I've got, I don't even know what all this says. Essentially, what this is doing is it's going to, when I run migrate like this, it's going to run through all these operations, create a table called books uh, with an ID, an author, a title, and it is the number. What you'll also notice is line 17, there is a field called ID. I didn't create an ID over here. And that's part of the power of inheriting something from Django like we have right over here. Like this automatically knows since we're talking about a SQL database, every single record is ordered and has an ID on it. So I'm just gonna run migrate, which takes this particular- I have a question, then, John. Yep, it takes this particular script and then it actually just runs everything at that particular time. Emma, you got a question? Yes. So um, if you can you go through, like, say you created the models and did the migration, and then you made an edit, could you go through the process to, like, make another migration? Sure. Let's say that I don't want this ISBN number because I don't really want it. So I've deleted this. I removed a, a column from the database altogether. So I'm going to run make migrations again. Keep it. Keep a look out on this left side, left hand side here. It's 0001 right now. What you'll notice is there's a 0002. There's a second migration. So when I first look, created this particular um, this particular database, I wanted to create book with these four fields. I made a change to this file, which altered the um, which altered the book class, and then 0002 was created, and it's going to run through this operations of migrations.remove field, find the model uh, called book. So find the table called book and remove the, the column called it ISBN. So when I run migrate again, it's going to run through the second one just in, in that order. It's like it's going to look for the next available uh, migration that hasn't been run yet. In this case, it's going to be remove book ISBN. And I'm just going to remove this here. So the second time you do it, you, when you make the migrations, you don't need to put the app name. You just do make migrations. I actually didn't make, I didn't do make migrations the first time. So, so the very first time I ran make migrations, I didn't specify an app name. I just ran this command followed by this command here. And that same thing again, when I changed something inside of models.py, I made another migration, which was 0002, and then I migrated, which removed the um, the ISBN from the database. So it detects that you removed um, yes. that you removed an element, and that's why it says remove. Um, um, yep. It is magic, in that in that sense. So yeah, all you have to do is just uh, rewrite the models.py file and then um, make migrations. That is exactly. Um, right. And then it okay, cool. That's amazing. 
so right. I was running into an error with mm -hmm. like multiple times with different people um, that when you make the migration the second time, it does something where it's like uh, press one for like a one off or two to quit and go back to default. Do you know what that is? I don't, but in the case that we get there, I will I'll go over it. Um, just keep things one. moving. We're going, what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, put a few records of like a book inside of the database. I think I interrupted somebody just before I started talking. Are there any questions before we move on to the next step? Are we capped to like 9,999 migration files or is there, does it keep going after that? I think it keeps going after that. I can't imagine this would cap out at a certain number of migration files, but I've never okay. gotten to that point. All right, I just meant for like like Amazon, for instance, or something like that, but. I, so that short answer is I don't know. Uh, long answer is if you have an application that's so huge that you need like 10,000 plus migrations, your app is too big. Um, at that point, what, that's what we call a monolithic architecture, which means that you just have one, imagine it's kind of like this. Imagine if the US Armed Forces was one giant branch. Could you imagine what would happen if the US Armed Forces was one giant branch versus smaller branches? You know, So the, that's the whole idea behind a monolithic architecture. You have just the US military, that's it. No, no sub branch, just everybody reports up to one thing uh, versus you have what's called microservice architecture. Microservice architecture is the idea that every single app that you create does one thing. So it's kind of like, imagine if you just, you, that's where you have, now you have the Air Force and now you have the Navy. And I understand there's cross, you know, there are more planes in the Navy than there are the Air Force. I get that, but it's like, the idea is every single app does one thing and they do that one thing really well. And that's the whole idea here. Thank you. Yep, that's the long answer. All right, so we've created our project called library. We created our app called books. We created our model called book singular with an author and a title. Let's create a few records. And to do this, I'm gonna go back in time to yesterday's curriculum. And I'm going to install something called pip install Django extensions. So I, I installed Django extensions inside of my virtual environment. And I'm gonna go back to my library, my my project levels settings, and I'm going to add another app called Django Extensions. I'm gonna add a comma to be nice to the next person. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a quick script to create a bunch of books. So I'm just going to create a new file. I'm gonna move it to the right here. Um, I'm gonna make this a Python file. Just to, it's just, it, I'm not gonna save it, but let's just say, um, let's create a bunch of books. Um, book one is equal to book. And I'm gonna say author equals something. And then um, title equals something else. And I'm gonna do book one dot save. I'm gonna repeat this process a whole bunch of times just so that we have stuff inside of the database. I realized that I had the wrong number here. Two, three, let's create four books inside the database. Can I get the favorite book of the next person? Uh, Giovanni, what is your favorite book? You are muted, Giovanni. Uh, I don't really read a lot, but I will say like a, a soccer book, I will say. Like... Soccer book, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the title is soccer book and the author is Gio. All right, let's go on to the uh, next person. Uh, Heather, you are next on my list. What's your favorite book? 1984 by George Orwell. Okay. I feel like I should read that, but I never have. I'm not much of a book reader. Next person, James Bellamy. What is your favorite book? Sorry, needed The Hobbit. Hobbit by Tolkien. J.R. Tolkien? Yeah, J.R. Tolkien. Okay. Um, and then finally, Jarrett Hosey, what's your favorite book? Uh, Harry Potter. Cool. So what I'm doing is I'm just creating a bunch of books here on the right side, just creating a script so that I can just copy and paste. 
So I've created, uh, I've pip installed Django extensions. I've added that as an app for this particular project called library. And what I'm going to run next is clear Python manage.py shell plus. So what shell plus does is that it gives you a Python shell, just like if I were to open a new window and just type in Python and I can do like a equals one and then print a just like it's a regular Python interpreter. But it also imports all of your all of the all of your particular apps so that I can access things right away. So I'm going to create a new book. Let's just say let's just take a look. How many books do we have in the database right now? Book objects dot all. Books dot objects dot all is basically just select star from books, and that's what's being returned here. So it looks like I've got no books. So I'm going to do create this book first. I'm going to create soccer book by Geo, and if I rerun books dot objects dot all, you'll see that inside of there I've got one book inside of there now, which is nice. I'm going to do the same thing here with book two. Book three and book four. So if all goes well, I should be able to do book.objects.all. And I've got four books inside of the database, which is cool. I've got four books. However, if I were just to take the, uh, let's just say book equals the last book, and I look over here at book. Book object four is not terribly descriptive. Like I, I don't really know anything about this book. It just says book object number four. And that's where this particular script comes into play, this str script, this method, I'm sorry. What this is doing is saying when I call book by having this inside of here, it basically rewrites it so that it doesn't look like this when I'm inspecting it, but instead it'll be like an ID with like, it'll actually have all these things inside of there. ID, title, written by, and so you can more easily see what's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit here. I'm going to reload shell, and I'm just going to do book.objects.all.all.last. I'm going to say book equals that. Now when I inspect book now, oh crap, oh man, something went wrong. <laughs> what you'll see is before, I know what happened. Uh, before, when I looked at book, it was book object number four, and now it says book self.id self.title written by self.author. Something went wrong. It's on line eight. Can somebody figure out what went wrong? Why is it not displaying like um, Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling? F string. F string. Thank you. Exit. Rerun it. Book objects all dot last. Book number four, Harry Potter written by J.K. Rowling. That's this str over here. What's happening is that I'm overwriting the default of what it looks like inside of the uh, when when inside of my shell, so I can more easily see what's actually going on. John, what happens when you have more uh, objects inside of the book class, um, other than author and title? Do you would you have to put those into your uh, Dunder string method? You don't, you don't have to. I just okay. chose it won't error out, I guess, is what I'm asking. Yeah, I, I just chose to do the things like obviously a book has other things like MSRP and ISBN and genre, and we can make this a much larger class. Uh, right now, you, you can just choose to put ever whatever you need in there. You don't need every single field. Okay, so it won't error out if we don't name everything in the Dunder nope, It will not. Check. Thank you. Cool. Let me exit out of here and let's see where we're at. All right, let's start talking about URLs. So just to recap, and how are we doing on time? We've been at this for 35 minutes. Just to recap, we have a library project with a book application inside of there. The goal of today is to create, read, update, and destroy books using a web interface. To get that started, we created our books uh, application, we registered it inside of library under settings.py by adding it here on line number 28. Then we decided to start creating our models. So the first step is always like if, if you're like taking notes on this one, create your project, create your app, register your app inside your project, and then start creating your, uh, your models and your migrations here. So I created one model called book. This takes in an author and a title. I made a migration for it. And that's this initial that py. It had is been to begin with, and I deleted it so that I and I made migrations again. And this is that second migration. I put in four uh, 
four individual uh, records of books inside the database, which will be useful in just a little bit. So the next thing that we're going to do, and we will go here until, let's see, we started at 10.05. Let's go until 10.55, and then we'll take a break and we'll come back. Um, first things first, we're going to create some actual URLs for the person to actually hit. So inside of books, we're going to create a new file at the same level as apps.py and models.py called urls.py. Can you guess what's going on here? I'm going to be writing all of my URLs at this particular point. I could copy and paste, but I'm going to do this one at a time. So from django.urls import tab. Uh, from dot import views. I'm going to import the views at this point. App name is equal to books. And I'm going to create some URL patterns. The first one I'm going to create, the first path that I'm going to create is just going to slash books slash nothing. It's going to take me to the views file, specifically the book list method. And I'm going to name this route book list. We'll just stop there. Before I do anything else, I'm going to register this apps urls.py file into the URLs of the project. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to copy this, this portion from this as well. I'm going to rewrite this whole file as this. All right. Let's talk about these, the difference between these two files. So on the right side, I've got urls.py for the library, which is, and again, that's the project level. And on the left, I've got urls.py for books, which is the application level. The main entry point into my app is libraries, uh, in, is the project level. So whenever anybody makes a request to uh, mywebsite.com slash books slash anything, what's going to happen is it's saying, pass off all of those requests over to books.url. Again, anytime anybody makes a request to slash uh, mywebsite.com slash books slash anything, pass it off to books URLs file. So whenever anybody, anybody makes a request to just slash books slash nothing, that's this path over here. What's going to happen is I'm going to take it over to views.py. There's going to be a method in there called book list. So let's bring that up over here. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to start by getting all of my books. I'm going to create a method called book list. It's going to take in a request, and I'm just going to start typing stuff. And I will explain it in just a second. John, do we need to use a separate linter for Django? What's that? Do we need to use a separate pi linter for Django? I do not. Okay. Oh, whatever, whatever we installed in the first day is what I'm using right now. All right, let's go through this. And we'll load this up in just a second here. Um, I'm gonna create one more thing and then I will go through the entire flow. Um, create a templates folder inside of there. I think it's called books. And inside of there, I'm going to create book list.html. And then I'm just going to copy and paste and we'll go over it and share it in a second. All right. What I'm going to do is I am going to let, let's just run through this. Somebody's coming to my website and they're making a request to um, uh, mywebsite.com slash books. Uh, they want to see all the books for this particular library. What's going to happen is it's going to first go over to the project level with this library.py. It's going to go over to the URLs and look for something for books. It sees that it sees books over here. 
And basically it's saying, whenever you make a request to slash books slash anything after the slash here, I'm gonna go over to the books folder, find a file called urls.py, that's this first tab here, and then they try to match up the pattern afterwards. So if I go to slash book slash nothing like this, what's gonna happen is it's gonna find this first path. It's gonna take me to the views.py file. This is where, this is the URL. So this is where you declare all the URLs that are gonna happen inside of your application. This is your views file. This is where all like the brains of the application are gonna happen. And this is where they're also gonna be talking to the models. So if I wanna look at all the books, what I'm, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to get all the books, create a payload of data. This is a dic in dictionary format of all books equal to books. I can also just copy this and dump it here. If I wanna be a little bit more explicit. So I'm grabbing all the books from the database. I'm basically creating a data payload that I'm passing off to a templates folder that I created. There's a books folder that I created. And then there's a book list.html file that I also created. So what this is doing is saying it's render this request Whenever anybody makes a request here, go ahead and open up booklist.html and pass in the data that I created inside this controller object over here. So what's happening? Let me say, let me just get rid of this um, right now, book.title and book.author. And get rid of this as well. So we've got this HTML file. It's just a giant table with uh, the title um and uh the author and for right now i'm going to get rid of all this so what is ha what's happening over here inside this curly brace parentheses is it's iterating over the data that you passed in for book in all books all books comes from views.py on line seven um, again we we grab the data out of the database we create a payload of data and we pass that whole payload meaning this thing off to booklist.html. So booklist.html has access to this object called all books with the value of all the books from the database. I iterate over all the books and I just interpolate the title and the author. So let's see if this works together and then we'll take a break. Manage.py run server. All right, so what you'll notice is that once I run the server and the server is running at this particular point, it's living at localhost, 127.0.1 is localhost. It means it's being hosted by your particular machine at port 8,000. I've got port 8,000 loaded up over here. It blows up. God, why does this blow up? Uh, Jason, tell me a little bit about why I'm not seeing all my books right now. Um, right now you're going to the, uh, you're not going to your uh, books app. Right now, I'm just going to localhost slash 8,000 slash nothing. And I want to make a request to slash books. And there we go. So let's run through this. I made a request to slash books. Cool. Again, we start with libraries.py. I made a request to slash books. It see the, this entire project sees that I'm making a request to slash books. Those URLs don't live here. They live inside of books.urls, that particular file. I made a request to just slash, just this thing over here, the slash books with nothing else afterwards. It's cool. I recognize that you gave me that request. I'm gonna pass you off to the views file, specifically the book list method. I go to the views file, to the book list method. I grab all the books from the data base over here and store it inside of a variable called books. So books now stores every single uh, book record in the database. I create a payload of data by saying data equals all books, equal to books here. And then I'm going to pass you off at that point to the booklist.html file with that data. Once I enter there, it's going to take me to templates. This is going to be fixed. So you have to have actually a folder called templates. Inside of there, there's a folder called books. Inside of there, there's a file called booklist. So find this file, which is right over here using the data that I passed in, which was all books is equal to books. And I'm just gonna create an H1. So big, big books at the very top. And then I create a table. The table has a title, has an author. It iterates through every single book that I passed in all books. All books again comes from right over here. 
and it iterates over them. And I, the first place is going to be the title. The second place is going to be the author. And that's why I've got title, author, soccer book, 1984, The Hobbit, and Harry Potter. Questions? I have a quick question, John. Sure. When on the HTML file, you it's saying for book and all books, is it able to access that because it's using the key in that dictionary passed in? Yes, that is a good question. So uh, the question basically was, where is all books coming from? All books is coming from this data that you're passing into the HTML file. This is Jinja, no Jinja is, is this a Jinja template or is that, okay. I'm guessing, I think this is a Jinja template. It's the idea here is I'm doing some sort of, I'm, I'm running Python code within HTML. So I'm grabbing all the data from the database here on line six. I'm creating a payload of books, uh, of, of like a payload of data. I can call this whatever I want. I can call this poop. And I'm going to pass this in, and then I'm going to change this to poop. So I'm basically just creating a, a dictionary of key and value pairs. And I've got poop over here. Poop is equal to books. And I'm iterating over every single thing inside of poop, which is books. So it, this is basically for book and books. If I go back and I refresh, it will give me the exact same outcome. But I'm going to change it back to all books. What what type of code do you see embedded in HTML? Is it mainly just for loops, or do people mostly add it's more mostly complex it's code? It's mostly like for loops. In uh, URLs.py, what's the app name doing there exactly at the top? This one. Uh, yes. uh, I don't actually think we need this. Let me just verify that. Yeah, we don't really need it. The idea here with the app name is books is, um, I actually haven't used this in so long. Uh, short answer is I don't know right now, but I can figure it out and tell you. It, it, I remember yesterday in the, in the exercise that we walked through, it, it mattered uh, near the end. There was something that we did that that it wanted that there, I can't remember exactly what it was. Um, so if I remember it correctly, like a redirect. You can reference the URL by the alias, not by exact. Um, so you can call this particular path by saying books, comma, book list. Cool. Yeah, we haven't we haven't got talked about uh, uh, named routes yet, but we're going to get there in just a little bit. All right, we've been, I've been talking for a long time. Uh, let's take an eight minute break. We'll be back at 11 o'clock and we'll continue on this CRUD path. Hey, John, can I see uh, your URLs.py at the project level real quick? Let me, let me pause the recording. Real quick. 